Welcome to the Dom Sub Devotion Podcast. Every episode of Dom Sub Devotion is an authentic reflection of our real life in a loving 24 7 DS marriage. If you crave the passion and intensity of a power exchange dynamic inside of a deeply loving and intimate relationship, you found the right place. You can always find more from us in the show notes and at infinitedevotion.com. Thank you for listening. So, Today, what I want to bring is how to balance having fun and enjoying life while going through the deep shit. Because the last, I don't know, while, it feels like a while, but this summer has been quite intense for me. And I'm sure we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what that is and why, because I I do think that there's very valuable information for me to share, but um, that's not the point of this. It's focusing on how to lay that down, how to flow through life, how to learn how to flow through the emotional chaos without grasping and living in fear without grasping for life always has to be good and happy but finding the balance of all of that and really accepting the reality of what is but also enjoying life because hey i think we all want to do that it's hard to set down the stuff that feels so big and important and consequential in life when you're going through it. Yeah, but I I feel like that is one thing that I've learned how to do in a much better way um, the, the longer I'm going through this. But also it's taken your leadership. You're taking charge of even creating some of that fun. That was going to be my first question for you is what have you needed from your side of this? Because I have my own side of being able to do this too, but it's different. What have you needed from me in that leadership in order for you to stay living a life, living your life while also knowing that you're in the middle of some pretty intense personal growth. Okay. I have so much to say there. (laughs) So I think I'm, I'm just going to give a disclaimer that this is probably going to be a squirrel. And I need to get a bag of popcorn and sit back. (laughs) Well, I don't think you want to be crunching on the microphone, but because it would probably pick that up quite well. Um, I'm going to say a couple things here. First of all, one thing that I have learned because of you is that I need experiences in life to learn and grow. As opposed to? Um, Living in my head and trying to think about what I might experience or what the experience might be like, I need to experience it from my body. So one thing that we love is live music. So while we're in Minnesota for the summer, we know a lot of places that we get to go experience live music. And so, um, you know, Wednesday night is, a big one of those that we have easy access to some fun and it doesn't matter what I've experienced on Wednesday. Like I look forward to going out to the music on Wednesday nights. And so even country music for you. (laughs) Yes. I especially enjoy going to country music when on the days when you've been in heavy stuff, because I know that 
it's going to have you dancing and laughing at the end of the night. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's been a lot of fun. And so for me, just getting out of the house, getting out of the typical surroundings where I'm living my life, dealing with this emotional chaos and actually going out and having that date night. And it's always fun. You decide where we're going. Like I do, you know, some of the research on like, hey, this band's here or this band's there and listen to some of the music and like, this one sounds good or this one doesn't sound good. And then I give it all to you and you just decide what we're doing. And so we always have fun, no matter what the day has been like, because I already said this, I've been through some big emotions and big scenes of myself and letting go. So that's been huge for me is get out. We Sometimes it's go have a beer and listen to the music and dance. And it's always a good time. You said you had a lot more to say. What else is there for you in all of that? Well, I kind of already mentioned this aspect of learning how to ride my emotions. And part of that, when I say that, is also accepting the reality of where I'm at as a woman in my cycle, in its entirety, without judgment, without shame, embarrassment, whatever. And understanding that I just change over the course of the month. And one day I might feel more energetic and the next day I don't. And instead of trying to go into the over analytical and try to understand why nothing happens in a vacuum. So I'm an ever changing being every day hormonally over the course of my month. Meanwhile, going through big emotions it's, it can feel like a lot. It can feel overwhelming. And so just, you've been a huge part of this and tracking my cycle and bringing acceptance. Like you've mirrored that to me. And so it's shown me where I wasn't living in acceptance of my own reality. It's pretty hard to have fun if you're rejecting the reality of whatever it is you're experiencing, what you're feeling. Yeah. And I've been there. And so go ahead. Would you say you still struggle sometimes with being okay with being in the mess? Do you battle yourself in that? I would say absolutely to some degree. But, well, <laughs> what, what first came to my mind was when it feels like I've been living in it. It's like, wow, when am I going to feel like I'm through it? Like whatever this thing is, right? Because it's always, it can always be ongoing if we desire just that deepest soul authenticity in an expansive life. We can always, so far, just push edges, push comfort zones. And so, yeah, there, there have been times where I'm just like, wow, when are we going to feel, when am I going to feel <laughs> like I'm quote unquote myself again? Meanwhile, recognizing that I don't actually know myself if I'm seeking authenticity. The self I knew was very egoic. And so like just being in that feeling of disoriented disorientation inside of me um, has definitely been a who I don't maybe humbling is the word experience. And really leaning into trust that it doesn't last forever. And again, you mirroring the acceptance of you are where you are. 
And I've had my own ups and downs with that over the last six weeks when you've really been in a lot of the, the muck of some of these things that have been coming up for you. And, you know, it's sometimes not fair, it seems like, because I've also had some pretty big things going for myself this summer. Some pretty big experiences that I've been having. And I've needed to be able to, in some cases, set down very important things to me, very meaningful experiences, and set them to the side. Because if I'm not able to be here with you and what you're going through, if I'm trying to work through my own stuff, you were just falling apart even more without me being able to be present for you. Yeah, th this has felt like some of the most challenging things ongoing. And I don't, I can't say that it's hasn't been affected by you going through your own stuff because definitely has. I can't know how much you've been present exactly when I'm kind of in my own emotional chaos. Well, the unfortunate, I say unfortunate, but true reality is you are only in emotional chaos to the extent that I'm not present. That makes sense. And this doesn't mean that it's my fault that you're going through chaos and I don't blame myself. I'm not hard on myself for it. But I know that when I am working through my own stuff, in some ways, I'm not providing the structure, the dominance, the containment that you need so that you can feel safely held to let go of some of the control. And you start going back into trying to grab it. I've watched myself do that a few times. Mm hmm and I say watched because it is a sense of watch, even in the times where I'm like, fuck, I am an ego and I have to let myself be here right now because I can't get myself out while holding the trust that next time, if this happens again, it's going to be different. It just, it's, my life experience has proven that to me. So when I sometimes st just stop resisting the ego and live in it and call it out, <laughs> it's like I'm accepting the truth of what is. And then magic can happen when I step forward. This is the probably the most challenging thing for me is recognizing that the things that are important to me, we've talked about this hierarchy of needs concept before, that in order for me to have you following me, I need to be putting your needs before mine. Which means that even if something is really important to me, I have to be willing to set it down, put it away, to let it go. If that's what's required, in order to be there to meet yours. And sometimes that sucks. Just does. But if I don't do that, you're not getting your needs met, and I'm not getting my needs met, and nobody's having fun. Right. And so this is where the trust for me comes in, that whatever it is that feels important to me, if there's not space for it in the energy of our connection right now, if I let it go and it's right for me, it will come back. But if I don't, everything starts to crumble around me. And when I say everything, I mean you. I can just watch you crumbling to the extent that I'm trying to hold on to something that might feel like it's essential to me.
end. Like that is a really, really deep surrender to truly let go of my needs and to put you first. And that's what's happened here over the last couple of weeks is it's meant I've had to get myself out of my attachment to some stuff and let it go so that I can come back and be more solid for you. And today's been a good example. You've had a little bit of roller coaster in your emotions today, mm -hmm. but I've contained it really well and you've, you've been able to just ride it and let it go. And we keep coming back to the fun. And this is the, the whole topic of this conversation. I've got to be able to contain you in order for you to have fun. And if you're not having fun, I'm not having fun. Yeah. So the word you brought up there was attachment. And it's an important aspect to look at because we both have to surrender our attachment to so much in life. And another aspect is, you know, there's been plenty of days over the course of time now where we're sitting down for coffee and you kind of have our day planned out. Well, lo and behold, it's either over breakfast or coffee, something like just comes to me and it, I just get hit with it and I see something and I need to feel something and now I'm in tears and not knowing how long this is going to be. Like sometimes our conversations, I don't even know how long they've been hours sitting there and you've been, you stay there and you be present with me no matter what. And you have to let go of timing within reason, right? Like there's certain things if you had to be somewhere <laughs> or do something like we would work through that. But thankfully, whenever these things have come up, it just seems to be that we do have the time and the space. And so I have to let go of my attachment if all of a sudden you, you decide, okay, our day is going to look different now because this is where you're at and this is new information for you to move forward with our day. And I like, I have to, this was something I had to learn that I was okay with ruining the moment or ruining the plans. It's not really ruining. It's just a change of path, change of course. But it feels like you're ruining it. Exactly. So, you know, we heard those words, you have to be okay with ruining the moment, but it's not ruining the moment because to me, there was judgment with that. And so when I can drop any judgment and love the fact that you see me where I'm at and you are solid and strong enough to move forward in a different way. I just get to trust that now this is even better and not be attached to anything about what you might have shared with me about what we were doing or not doing, you know, whatever. Right. Because if I cancel plans because I see you not being in the emotional state to be able to follow through on those plans, then that's a decision that I get to make as your dominant as your sir, I need to set up our lives, but also be flexible enough to set up our days in a way that allow you to be in that integrity to the moment, the integrity to your emotion. And the, the caveat or the, the challenge there in leading you in those moments is I always want to honor that feeling that you're having, but I cannot let that be the dominant force in our relationship either. Right. I can't let your feelings be, sir. I can't let them boss me around because then I'm just caving to you. 
I'm putting you in charge and now I'm just reacting to you and how you're feeling. And that is where this emotional openness can and has, I'll say can and has bit me in the butt sometimes because I do care a lot and maybe sometimes a little bit too much. Not that maybe caring too much isn't the right way of saying it, but I've given a little too much power to those emotions at times. And then, you know, what that really is showing you is that your emotions can overrun my structure. They can overrun my leadership. And that's not going to create a long-term feeling of safety or containment for you. So I'm curious if you have any thoughts or reflections on what that what that's like or what you really see yourself needing from me in those moments where you need to be heard but also where you need containment even if you maybe don't want it um i would say that i don't it's not that i don't want the containment i need the containment when you're saying you can't let my emotional chaos be the dominant right exactly but it's through the those experiences and through letting them happen that you get to learn as my dominant when do i when do you change course depending on what it is right or when do you say okay this is what we're now doing and there's no black and white in that. There's no one size fits all. There's no right or wrong. And so it might mean something surfaced in me and I'm in a world of sadness and grief and we had plans to go out for dinner with friends and I'm like, I don't even feel like I can pull myself up and go engage with people. Or it might mean I really love these people and I'm so looking forward to it. And I know that that's just what I need today. Or like you telling me this more like. Right. Because sometimes you can't f know that in the moment. Is it better to follow through on those plans or is it better to cancel them? Because if you're just really lost in some big emotion. Where, right. And so this is where I need to open myself to trusting you to make those decisions and provide that structure because I can't do that for myself, nor do I want to. And how we go about that kind of ebbs and flows and shifts and changes depending on even where I'm at in my cycle or like I said, what the plans were. And I love how you've gone about that. Sometimes you will try to get me not to change plans. Absolutely, I have, because I feel responsible for ruining the moment. And therefore, you're making yourself responsible for my emotions because you're making assumptions about how I feel about it. Absolutely. And that's been a big area. I mean, that, that stems from people-pleasing. Right. So that's been a big area of growth that I would say is still ongoing because there's like these little threads that want to come back and, you know, rewiring those habits, <laughs> that computer program takes time. So there's an interesting little thought on projection that I just had there. Earlier this week, you were sitting and watching me do a project. That took me probably six hours and it was this slow, tedious little thing of like, just I was getting messy. I was doing basically mechanic work mm -hmm. and you complimented me at one point saying that you admired something about my patience with doing this work and not getting frustrated with it. Right, because I also knew that you didn't completely know how to do this project, but you were figuring it out as you went and calm through the whole thing. 
so on one hand, I know that, and you know that that's my energy. That's mm -hmm. my energy towards life is generally pretty measured and patient, but also persistent. But then in the moments where you are quote unquote ruining plans, <laughs> when your emotions are just big and I'm saying, no, we're not going to do this now. If you are looking at me and thinking that I'm going to be frustrated or upset, you know that that's not how I react to things. Really what it is, is something like it's a projection of how you feel about yourself for doing that and assuming or projecting onto me that I'm going to feel the same way. That's a great example of what projection is. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, that one for me is still an ongoing unwinding. No doubt. That's why I think it's so important for dominance to really become masterful students of communication, of psychology. We have to be able to understand that, for example, if I say, no, we're not doing this and you get upset and start acting like I'm punishing you when I know that I'm not, and I know that I'm not upset, but you're treating me like I'm upset or you're getting upset with me for changing the plans to be able to recognize in the moment that that's happening, that this is just a projection because it's not actually reflective of what, of how I feel about it at all is a massively important skill in being able to stay grounded in myself and say, why don't you go sit down first, go put on a hooded sweatshirt, sit down on the couch, find a movie. I'm going to make some popcorn. <laughs> All right. Instead of getting upset at you for getting upset and then trying to defend myself and justify myself. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's pointless because it's not even real. Right. I'm sure we've been there in the past that way, but yep. <laughs> Feel seen. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I completely admit that I, like I said, that's an ongoing unwinding in me of really living in the reality of the moment and not holding myself to this masculine integrity ideal. Yeah. Just for the listeners who are new to this concept, we differentiate between masculine integrity, which is doing what you say you're going to do, following through on what you say you're going to follow through on being good, true to your word and living your life in congruence, meaning you're the same person inside and out and you're acting in congruence or alignment with your values. Feminine integrity is different. It's not the same. It is being true to how you feel in the moment. It's being willing to change your mind. It's being comfortable with ruining the moment, speaking up, saying what you feel. And this is essential to polarity. It's essential to having a long-term relationship, a long-term dom sub dynamic that stays spicy in a good way. Yeah. Another thing that's important is having some kind of a rudder. If we're trying to work through the heavy stuff, but also have fun, this is why I teach and preach so much about the importance and necessity of knowing what your values are. Understanding what this dynamic really stands for. What's the point of it? The little moment to moment things are a lot easier to ebb and flow with. If you know that zoomed out, this little situation doesn't mean a whole lot in the big picture of what we're actually doing here over the next 10, 20, 30 years together. What is it that we're trying to 
to be together. Yeah, because that's really important. I feel like our whole relationship was slowly going through an overhaul in a way. It has and our been whole for years. like our whole experience of life and what that looks like has been a slow shift. Because you can't do all of this overnight or in a week or a month or a year even. And it really has required us to approach life in a whole new way. And I've always appreciated how you lead us in that and the way that you've set up our lives to support what's important to us. You've done an amazing job at that. I love it. And it has required us to let go of certain things or let go of certain ways that we were operating in the world, in other relationships, all of that. And it's like taking off your pair of glasses and putting on a new one and saying, this is how we're, I'm going to see the world now. And I feel like I've had to go through lots of different glasses. <laughs> Well, you keep taking them off and thinking that you're actually seeing and realizing that you just have been wearing lots of pairs of them. Yeah, maybe that's a better way to say it. Yeah, that analogy. Yeah. And this is, that's actually a really good analogy on the topic and concept of patience and on this whole putting your needs before mine. The glasses that you're wearing in any given moment are the truth of how you see the world. I've been doing this work longer than you have, and I started in a different place than you did. We're, yeah. We're, and everybody is different and unique in where they came from, what they've been through, and what the opportunities that they have are to transcend to find more of themselves, to come more into themselves. So I feel as though I've reached a place where I'm, if I'm wearing glasses, they aren't very powerful. I see things in the world pretty clearly. Yes, you do. Which means that I also see the glasses that you're wearing in any given moment pretty clearly. Yeah. And a part of seeing you and leading you is recognizing and being able to do my best to understand that how you see the world right now is true to you. Even if I can look at it and go, you're fucking deceiving yourself. And I can help show you how to take off that pair of glasses. But if I am trying to show you something that is three or four or eight or 12 layers of glasses deep, that maybe even gets through them and shows you a deeper truth that you're not ready to see, you can't handle it because you're not ready to. Right. And it can actually be detrimental. It can be more triggering in a way that makes me feel even more out of control. And I don't really know how to explain that in a deeper way. I do. It's like Jack Nicholson in A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. At, at a certain point, you, I believe that you will, but right now, certain levels or, or the, a certain depth of truth isn't accessible to you. It's like something got started on fire. Some point down the road, that same thing probably feel very different. There are things that you're able to access and explore and be present with now that we couldn't have even said out loud five years ago. Right. 
but it's the skill of leading you has been trying to see the world as you see it so that I can help to take you one step deeper at a time. Right. It would not be helpful for you just to say, damn it, take off that pair of glasses. <laughs> I'd be like, I'm fucking trying. <laughs> <laughs> because my job, my role in that is feeling my way through the pain. And I don't know and I don't control what those layers are. It sounds probably foreign to some, but that's the truth of what this is. Those layers only exist because of pain. Exactly. Their protection from pain. Exactly. So to go too deep is activating too much pain for you to be able to be present with what you need to right now. Right. And that's why I said the word triggering. And like when we say pain, that's some trauma. It's making that feel overwhelmingly big. When it's like, okay, let's just set that aside. We can know it's there, but not have to poke it right now. Let's let me see what's next. And this is where you had to surrender. Well, that that's a constant surrender for me. Because I can see you in everything that you're experiencing and I can see all of the self-deception and I can see all of the pain and the ways that it flares up and I can feel it in, in every moment that it's there. But to your point, if I told you just take off the damn glasses, well, that pain is your ego and the ego doesn't want to be seen. And so if I am exposing you to pain that you're not ready to see, you're not going to receive it. You're going to resist it. You're going to fight back against it. Absolutely. What does that fighting back feel like in you? Well, the further I've come down this path, the more it has started to feel like kind of an animal takes over me. <laughs> depending on what it is, because it seems like the closer I got to the deeper, like core belief systems that were there that, you know, speaking about layers, if we're looking at these as foundation blocks, I'm pulling off the cinder blocks, covering all of this like core things. When I get to those and they get poked, I've had moments where I was like, I feel like I fucking don't know myself right now. <laughs> moments of feeling so out of control by this like piece of me that I don't even want. <laughs> and I don't know how to like stop essentially. I've had some of those. I've also had ones that don't feel so intense, but it's like, I'm totally in my ego right now. And I tell you that, and I'm like, I feel this. And I just need to let it be there. It, like in those moments, it doesn't need to be talked about. I just need to be like, yep, I see you. Those moments are the ones where back to this lots of layers of eyeglasses analogy where you've like maybe lifted one of them up and seen through a little bit different set of lenses. So it's a little bit of exposure. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of, of deeper seeing a little bit more clarity that you can handle. Right. And so my mind is able to receive that, but now I have to surrender and go through the finishing of the unwinding and I don't get to control how 
that looks, what it feels like, how long it takes. And I've learned that resisting it doesn't help either. Trying to just sometimes be like, okay, I'm going to decide this now. That hasn't even helped all the time. There's no fucking manual for this shit. <laughs> the one thing that has helped is trying to tune into the excitement of what might be possible in that surrender. Like what might it make available to you? That's probably been the most helpful is to look for the excitement. And this is back to this whole topic of fun. This is where I'll use the word kink here can help lead us to authenticity. It can help lead us into deeper seeing because the thing that feels exciting about letting go, the thing that feels exciting about surrender, about submission can show you or give you enough of a reason or motivation to be able to set that thing down, not just because you want to, but because it feels good to. Yes, but like, even in hearing you say that, I have gotten to the point numerous times where I'm like, okay, I'm setting this down. And then I'm still going through the work for like six months or a year on setting this down. <laughs> So that's what I'm talking about. Like, I don't get to control it. But when you were talking about leaning into the excitement, sure, in some things, there's, if it's a fear, there's also excitement on the other end of the spectrum. And so being able to expand my capacity to feel both and let both permeate me and ebb and flow with it. Because what if I hold the desire for what I truly want to experience, the freedom, the excitement, you know, more in life, that has always risen to a point of squashing the fears. But again, through experience. This is been the most careful line that I've had to walk. And sometimes I would even say most of the time I've done it pretty gracefully. Sometimes I've not, but seeing where, where to show you what you need to see and where not to is a, it's a fine line to walk and not always a fun one. But this is, this isn't just a game. This is not just a kink. This isn't just a, this isn't to quote a comedian we saw recently. This isn't all just funsies, this deep, heavy work, but it is why it's important to still maintain that other side to keep having fun to keep doing things together to keep enjoying life because this stuff can take over if you let it yeah and there are some times where you just have to let it take over you for the day or for the two days or like whatever it really weeks. is well no <laughs> that hasn't happened no. because we still have gone out and had a lot of fun like I still show up and do these podcasts. My point is that back to this word attachment, if you're so attached to the feeling in your mind or in your head is like down, you can get lost in the muck, but you can also learn to grow in your capacity to just set it down for a little bit, knowing that you're not running away from it. You can't. <laughs> You can't even try because life is going to sh keep showing you what you need to see. But then set it down and go have fun. And what that fun looks like is going to be different depending on what you're going through, right? You know, it might be like, all right, we're going to get out of the house in our experience and go to the boat and enjoy the lake and not talk about anything serious because that's easy to get 
caught up in, right? It's like, oh, all of a sudden our conversations are back to the deep shit. And we're like, fuck, we said we weren't going to do that. Back to something fun. Turn on the music on the boat and like make the best of the reality of what is. You, you might not feel like, oh my gosh, I'm like so happy and whatever. Is that how you do it? <laughs> but that's okay. You know, make the best of the moments and still enjoy each other is my point. Yeah. And accept that you are where you are because some of those moments when you're just trying to let go of something, it's still there and you still feel it. You still feel its presence. It's like, it's an energy that just hangs in the room for a while. Mm -hmm. But you really just have to accept that it's there and try to do your best to move on. And I will say that doing this together, the fact that we are both in this together has really helped because being, for me, being able to know and trust that you're committed to taking off those glasses, to seeing more clearly, to allowing me to lead you into a more authentic reality and expression of yourself and a more authentic desire and submission to me. I have trust in you that that is where we are going. That trust gives me more patience with you because I know that you're committed to it. I also, the challenge in, in that is I trust you to the ends of the earth that you desire it. I also know that life is short and I want to live the best life that I can with you. And I, I would love to experience you seeing the world as clearly as you can. And I want that probably more than anything. So the, there's the trust and the patience, and there's also the really deep desire to, and honestly, the wish that I could make it go faster because I would love, and I look forward to being able to experience that with you. Yep. And from my perspective, I can know all of that to be true. But then the feel of that sometimes when I hear you say, I just want you to ex like experience life, whatever your words are, with more, with whatever, it also feels like a complete rejection of where I'm at. Because you want me to get there and I'm over here. And I'm like, what the fuck? And that's exactly what I was talking about before. Too many layers, like too many lenses lifted up. It just that de even the desire to take you farther than the next step of where you are right now activates the resistance to the very thing that I want. Yeah. And th that's been an interesting thing for me because, you know, when we talk about desiring, what are we kind of doing? Like, what do I want? And like, just kind of wanting can be futuristic but then how does that align with being where i'm at and accepting where i'm at because for me it it feels like talking about the future too much all of a sudden just takes me out of the present moment and i'm like i i can't constantly be going back and forth so that's just been my experience that i try to just again, completely accept because I'm coming into an, uh, I'm going to say it this way, a version of myself that I haven't known yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I'm also falling in love with her more and more and experiencing life in a whole new way. And it's a lot. It's a lot while trying to also enjoy every moment to its fullest. You know, desire is a really interesting one because it is both present and future, right? Yeah, in different ways. Because on its face, it's about where, where you want to go or what you want to experience, what you want to have, what you want to do. It, 
but the energy of desire itself only exists in the present moment. Mm -hmm. It's actually not about the future at all. It's the attachment to the having that has to be let go of without having to let go of the wanting of it and the feeling of the wanting now. And that's, that's a really tough thing to, to sever the wanting versus having. Yeah. Let me see if I can make sense of what I'm also talking about. There is like back to what I was speaking about in reference to what you shared was your desire for me of, I want you to like experience this. And I'm like, yes, I see that. I can say I want that and no, I'm not there. And no, I can't just flip a switch and be like, yep, I'm, I'm good now. So it's holding that while being where I'm at, being where my feet are. Yeah. It's too many steps out into the future to even be able to be present with the desire much, even if it is detached from the, from the experience, like right. the desire isn't even able to be there because that is present in a set of glasses. That's a few layers back from the ones that you're wearing right now. Right. I know we're not using specifics, so I hope this is making sense. <laughs> well, we're not using specifics for a couple of reasons. One, a part of our contract is privacy. And even though we share a lot of our lives, the way that it's worded in our contract is that it's my discretion how much of our lives we reveal and how much of our lives we keep private. Right. And even though we live a relatively public life now, there are still specifics that just get to be for us. And second of all, I'd like to not share specifics around things like this because I want the people who hear this to apply it to their own lives and not try to copy what we do because we are only doing what's right for us. This is why we talk in vague generalities a lot because you out there, <laughs> listeners, watchers have to take these concepts and apply them to whatever's real for you. And if we get too into the weeds of the specifics of our life, it could tend to make you like pull you in a direction of thinking that you need to do what we're doing. And that's not what it is at all. Right. So this conversation was going to be about keeping in the fun while we're going through the heavy stuff. We've talked a lot about the heavy stuff. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this is how we've had to go about dealing with these things. Cause we've been living in this unwinding for years and remodeling a relationship and bringing an unconscious relationship into consciousness, bringing a vanilla relationship into a power exchange relationship and both coming into more authentic expressions of ourselves without breaking something that we don't want to break. Meaning this connection between us has taken a lot of intentionality. It's taken a lot of really deep desire to prioritize this relationship. And there's no better way to prioritize a relationship than to continue to do the things that build that connection. Right. Dumb sub doesn't have to be all serious all the time. Like you can be my pretty submissive while you're dancing at a country concert. Right. I want to just share kind of one thing that has been valuable for us in, you know, going from that 
feeling a lot of emotions to getting out of the house beyond them going to have that fun and we have our own ritual on what is that and we really do it on a daily basis but um it, it's through physical connection and I'm, I'm not talking about sex it really is just connecting our physical bodies and we lay on the bed this is what works for us and so i am going to share an example but because i do think this is very helpful in just hearing from a lot of women on that being in their man's presence and just being accepted and feeling that physical contact can just like be such a relief And for me, when we do that, no matter what, no matter if it's like, we just haven't been as um, with each other all day, and we just want a moment of connection, but we go and lay down on the bed. And when I like cuddle my body into you, I koala bear into you, like my yeah. nervous just system. Literally, I lay on my back, Dawn lays on her side next to me, and she kind of wraps herself around me like a koala bear climbing a eucalyptus tree yeah kind of yeah and like what that does for my body for my nervous system for my heart and soul and everything is just this like it's like a letting go sometimes tears come but then when we have moments where we just are there you're just present with me there may be talking there may be not but when when you then say, okay, this is what we're going to go do now. For me, that's like everything. It doesn't matter what you say, I'm following you at the point where I'm at now. And so that has just been helpful for me because now I get to lean into you even more and I'm just with you and you're leading me, you're the structure and the order and you've got me. Yeah. And that's an interesting experience too, because I can literally feel you soften into me mm -hmm. as soon as we lay down there, you lay down next to me. I wrap my arms around you. You kind of just snuggle into me and I can f feel your energy shift. I can feel the tension in you go away. Mm -hmm. And when I say I can feel it in my body, I feel your tension dissolve in my body. Like I'm receiving it from you and then you are able to move it out of you. And most of the time it doesn't now transmute into tension in me it just dissolves in both of us. Yeah. And then you lead us into fun, whatever that fun is going to be for next. And we do have a lot of fun together and that's a big part of what makes us special together is how much we like each other. Yeah. Cause I really do just enjoy you. I enjoy you too. I like you a lot. So thank you for everyone for tuning in today. We appreciate you. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you listening and please let us know in the comments. If you have questions for us, if you have feedback for us on this, I think we might be able to get some really good questions from people from this conversation that we could bring back to a Q and a as well in the future. So please let us know how we can help you and how we can help make the content and the conversation we had here land even more deeply for you. Yeah. And we appreciate all of you. So thanks once again for listening.